Hello and welcome to the December Market Update. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays. My name is Dennis Maynard. I am a real estate broker in Los Angeles. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. In this month's Market Update, we're going to go through multiple subjects. The first is a continuation from a RealCap Daily episode on the potential for a housing crash published this week. We are also going to talk about inflation and hedges, rental market numbers, mortgage rates, the national housing market, and the Los Angeles County numbers. I will leave chapter markers below so you can jump ahead if you like. Many economists and pundits are calling for prices to fall a minimum of 7 to 10 percent. If there is a recession, some are looking for prices to fall 20% next year. However, using the Case-Shiller Index, home prices rose 31% from January 2020. This is largely due to cheap money. At the same time, foreclosures remain extremely low. I covered this in the Real Cap Daily Update, which we are going to continue. We're kind of continuing here. You can watch it by clicking the link above. Essentially, we are dealing with a supply and demand imbalance. The U.S. is undersupplied by about 4 million homes, while interest rates have been kept way too low for way too long. Looking at this graph, you can see mortgage rates and the Fed funds rates since 2000. This juiced up demand and pricing. Supply, on the other hand, did not keep up pace. This is evident in the single-family construction starts on this graph. So, are we headed for a crash? Well, according to Taylor Marr, for those bearish folks eagerly awaiting a home price crash, you'll have to keep waiting. As much demand is pulling back from supply is as well reducing the downward pressure on prices in the short run. Let's take a look at why this is the case. Home equity is still substantial. 38% of homes in the U.S. are owned free and clear with no mortgage. Here is a chart of the loan-to-value distribution from CoreLogic. The majority of homeowners across the country have a loan-to-value ratio of 80% or less, meaning 20% or more equity in their homes. The total amount of tappable equity in homes across the country with LTVs at 80% max, $10.3 trillion. The total amount of equity, $16 trillion. Which city is in the best position for homeowner equity? The answer is Los Angeles. Most homeowners don't have to sell, even though they have lost some equity. This is demonstrated further by 30-day late notices on mortgages, which are currently below 3% of total mortgages at large banks. In order to have a crash, you need to have a large supply of inventory to be liquidated. Homeowners across the U.S. don't have to sell. There will be sales happening, but not enough to cause a crash. So are we looking at a correction or a crash? I would call it a correction from inflated prices. After all, if you lose 20% from peak pricing to still have 10% equity gain from 2020, you're still ahead. Inflation. I hear complaints constantly. Principle number nine from my economics courses. Prices rise when governments print too much money. Since January 2021, the Biden administration and Congress have been flooding the economy with money. This was compounded with more regulations and more restrictions on energy production and supply chain constraints. This affected energy, housing, food, and now wages. This is evident in these charts. Keep in mind, this is a 12-month rate of change. The price increases are on top of the 2021 price increases. Inflation is currently at 7.7%. Gasoline is up 17.5% and will likely go back up higher when China reopens. Electricity is up 14.1% and food is up 12.1%. What do all of these have in common? 
hydrocarbons, or oil and natural gas. Essentially, we are reliving the 1970s, except we're doing it to ourselves. In case you're wondering, Los Angeles is at 7.5% inflation. Traditionally, there are hedges against inflation, including the stock market, metals, and real estate. All are being affected due to the increasing value of the US dollar, which is driven by monetary policy. One such place to park money is the individual series bond from treasurydirect.gov. The current rate through April 2023 is 6.89%. There are limitations, but it is a good start. Real estate is a hedge because it can be rented. Rents can adjust over time. This is why multifamily real estate has been hot. However, it appears that rental rates have been pushed to their limits. Renters' abilities to absorb higher rents are challenged. According to a survey by PropertyManagement.com, one in four millennials are living at home. That is the age group between 26 and 41 years old. Out of the group surveyed, 55% move home in the last 12 months, 51% to save money, and 39% because they can't afford rent. Of the millennials, only 44% can afford a mortgage at 3.5% interest rate or less. Rents are now close to 7%. According to Zillow, rents in Los Angeles for a two-bedroom average $2,866 per month. This is for the county, so please don't call me up and say I'm dead wrong and you would never rent your Beverly Hills apartment for that rate. It's for the whole of Los Angeles. But in case you're wondering, the median two-bedroom apartment in Beverly Hills rents for around $3,900 per month. In the national housing market, list prices are still up 10% over last year. The number of sellers putting their homes up for sale has declined tw for 22 weeks in a row. Inventory is up 53% from, from one year ago, while time to sell took nine days longer. There is traditionally a slowdown in the winter months in the number of homes coming on the market and how long it takes to sell. The increase in list prices is largely due to migration to the Midwest elevating home prices. In high cost areas and overheated markets, prices are generally falling. In Los Angeles, the median single family home price has fallen to $870,000, down 13% from its peak in June. There is currently 2.7 months supply. The median sales price for condos fell to $621,000, down 5.6% from the peak. The number of months supply stayed flat at around two and a half months. Both homes and condos have an average days of market between 34 and 36 days, and final sales prices are falling in around asking. This means homeowners are pricing their properties well. Generally, sales in Los Angeles are still happening. Overpriced listings are reducing their prices to meet market demand. The number of buyers who will qualify for current prices has fallen, which means this is causing the, prompting the shift in price. Many buyers still have substantial savings and can use it as down payments. But, and this is important, Los Angeles still remains the least affordable city in the country. Many are speculating a return to cheap rates again once the recession starts. Rate pivots from the Fed have not historically happened until the bottom of recessions. However, I don't anticipate a return to zero Fed funds rate or sub-4% mortgages. Rather, I expect a reversion to the mean in which mortgage rates will range between 6 and 9%. Congress will have to get its fiscal house in order. What are your thoughts on the market? Have you been thinking about selling your property? Leave your comments below. If you have any questions or you would like me to review your property, please reach out. I'm here to answer your questions.